Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be talking about CRISPR gene editing technology and the amazing news that has recently come out. Now although I do talk about a lot of hair loss related treatments and research in general, I think it's worth to mention when a monumental technology like CRISPR has actually been approved in some way shape or form. And recently CRISPR has been FDA approved for two particular conditions. This would be the blood disorder sickle cell anemia. And for those of you who don't know, in sickle cell anemia, this disorder leads to the production of an abnormal form of hemoglobin called hemoglobin S. And hemoglobin is a vital protein found in red blood cells, and it's responsible for transporting oxygen throughout the entire body. So if you're getting these abnormal shapes, you can't adequately transport oxygen to your tissues. Furthermore, you can have very serious conditions like blood clots. So people who have sickle cell anemia, sometimes they have, you know, aching pains. And even in rare cases, they develop these strange cancers. The one that I particularly remember is a sort of cancer of the kidney. And that condition is called renal medullary carcinoma, also known as RMC. Now, looking at the genetics of sickle cell anemia, it's actually co-dominant, which means you can have one copy of the gene and still produce sickle cells. However, if you have two copies of this gene, you'll be producing more sickle cells quite frequently, and that can pretty much reduce your lifespan and overall quality of life. So this condition typically affects people who are of sub-Saharan African descent, also in the Mediterranean region, there are people who do have sickle cell anemia and I think there's a particular, like, gene population in the Middle East that also suffer from this genetic condition or a variant of this kind of genetic condition. So the CRISPR treatment that was developed for this is a CRISPR therapy drug called LifeGenia. LifeGenia works by employing advanced gene editing technology to modify the hematopoietic stem cells within the bone marrow. These are the blood-forming stem cells that create hemoglobin, right? So there's something genetically wrong with it. The other CRISPR therapy that was just FDA approved is the drug therapy cas -Jevy. And cas -Jevy is being used to treat beta thalassemia. Now, beta thalassemia is a genetic blood disorder that reduces the production of hemoglobin. And again, just like in sickle cell anemia, hemoglobin is very important when it comes to carrying oxygen to cells throughout our body, right? So in this condition, the beta globin part of hemoglobin is affected. There are several forms of beta thalassemia, including thalassemia minor, intermedia, and also major. And the major is also called Cooley's anemia. Now, the severity of the disease depends on how many of the four beta globin genes are mutated or absent. Now, patients with a severe form of beta thalassemia often require regular blood transfusions to replenish their red blood cell levels and maintain sufficient hemoglobin. So it's very exciting. We have two FDA-approved CRISPR drugs essentially on the market to help treat these rare genetic conditions. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that androgenetic alopecia is a rare genetic condition, right? Or one that is even harmful. It just sucks and it's mostly cosmetic. But I think we should be a bit more cheerful here because having CRISPR technology finally on the market in some capacity opens new doors that have never been opened before, right? Currently, there is research pertaining to CRISPR and androgenetic alopecia. So, so long as it is safe, if we can get an effective treatment protocol developed by some company, perhaps involving hair follicle cloning, or the stem cells in the hair follicle niche. And then if we could use some sort of CRISPR gene editing to edit hair follicles that are essentially weak to DHT, or we can improve their DHT resistance, right? That could very well spell the end for a condition like androgenetic alopecia by using CRISPR to essentially edit our hair follicles. Now we can take the hair follicle out, clone it, or we can inject it into the scalp, 
really, I wouldn't know which sort of protocol they would go by. Obviously, it would have to be safe. It would have to be non-mutinogenic. But no, this is like excellent news. So what is CRISPR technology? What is this thing? So CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. And it's a groundbreaking gene editing technology that has revolutionized molecular biology. So here's a general overview of how CRISPR works. So originally, it was discovered as part of the bacterial immune system. CRISPR helps bacteria defend against viral attacks. So when a virus infects a bacterium, the CRISPR system stores a snippet of that virus's DNA in the bacterial genome. This stored viral DNA, called a spacer, helps the bacterium recognize and defend against it if a virus like it attacks the bacterium in the future. So the most common used CRISPR system in gene engineering is the CRISPR-Cas9 system. Cas9 is a protein that acts like a pair of molecular scissors. The system also requires a piece of RNA, also known as guide RNA, or gRNA, which is designed to match the DNA sequence of the target gene. When the CRISPR-Cas9 system is introduced into a cell, the guide RNA binds to its matching DNA sequence in the genome, which would be the target gene that the researchers want to edit. Once the guide RNA has bound to the target DNA, the Cas9 protein cuts the DNA at this precise location. This cut is made in both strands of the DNA helix, resulting in a double-strand break. The cell responds to this break by trying to repair the DNA. The repair process is typically done through one of two ways. The first being the non-homologous end joining, or the NHEJ, or the homology directed repair, or HDR. So with NHEJ, this is typically an error-prone repair mechanism that often leads to insertions at the cut site. And this could be helpful if we're trying to get rid of a specific gene, right? On the other hand, we have the HDR, the HDR repair mechanism, that is. And this is used for more precise gene editing. In this case, a piece of donor DNA with the desired sequence is also introduced into the cell. The cell uses this donor DNA as a template to repair the cut, leading to the insertion of a new gene or the correction of a faulty gene. So depending on what we want to do, if we want to add something, we're looking at using the HDR method. If we want to remove something, we're looking at using the NHEJ method. And the result is a permanent modification of the genome at a specific location in an organism. So now you can see why CRISPR technology would be very important for a condition like androgenetic alopecia. We can go into the hair follicle, we can edit whatever DNA that makes a hair follicle sensitive to DHT, and we can do this by essentially cloning hair follicles that are sensitive or not sensitive to DHT, finding the genetic difference between the ones that tend to be way more sensitive to DHT compared to the ones that are more resistant. We can coalesce it and make a profile of genes that say, hey, these are the subset of genes that make a hair follicle sensitive to DHT, and then from there we can remove it. We can do this in combination with hair cloning in some sort of petri dish. Now, I'm just saying all of this as a potential means that researchers may go through in trying to use CRISPR technology to treat androgenetic alopecia. Parallel to these developments, a study published in the journal Biomaterials explored the use of CRISPR technology in treating androgenetic alopecia. The study titled, quote, Ultrasound Activated Particles as CRISPR-Cas9 Delivery System for Androgenetic Alopecia Therapy, unquote, conducted by Ji Yoon Ryu et al., where researchers designed a micro-bubble nanoliposomal particle system that could deliver the CRISPR-Cas9 complex specifically to the dermal papilla cells in the hair follicles. Now, this system is activated by ultrasound, which facilitated the targeted delivery of the gene-editing complex. 
the CRISPR-Cas9 was programmed to target and edit the SRD5A2 gene. Now, this gene is responsible for the creation of the type 2 5-alpha reductase enzyme that plays a crucial role in converting testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. So really, they're decreasing the presence of this enzyme in the dermal papillae cells. This gene is very much implicated in androgenetic alopecia by contributing to the miniaturization of hair follicles. So the outcome of this study is very promising in conjunction with all the news about CRISPR technology. The researchers here successfully delivered the Cas9 guiding RNA complex into the dermal papillae cells and demonstrated effective gene editing with a result decrease of the SRD5A2 expression. So they successfully decreased the production of 5-alpha reductase type 2. And by the way, they were using an animal model to display this. They were using male mice, and these are the C57B6 mice, which are a common strain used in biomedical research. But nevertheless, this serves as a great proof of concept for CRISPR technology in the treatment of androgenetic alopecia. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Just wanted to get this news out there and to give people some updates in the world of gene editing technology and just in general when it comes to pharmaceuticals. And I want to say this, I feel like a champion because I invested in CRISPR stock, the CRISPR AG stock that helped bring these drugs to the market, these new drugs, right? Or I guess you can say gene therapies, right? And that was a pretty great investment. I invested, I want to say when it was at $35, I think I was a senior in high school. I was just about to graduate. And yeah, this is, let's just say that it was a pretty good call. I wish I bought more stock, but uh, I don't know, maybe I'll turn this into a stock discussion, right? Maybe we'll have some stock report, pharmaceutical stock report discussions from time to time, but I don't want to bore you guys. But if you got this far into this video, comment in the comment section, money man. Yeah, money man, M-O-N-E-Y-M-A-N, money man, because that's how I feel. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys for watching. And I'll